Well, what another beautiful day here in the Carolinas. I took advantage of the uh, weather, got outside, got my uh, saw out, cut a couple new uh, furring strips here, and extended the uh, width, I'll call it here, or girth, of my uh, small portable chassis stand. You guys saw me uh, first use this when I was doing some signal tracing demo. I've got my uh, bigger stand, but uh, you know, I thought I'd just go ahead and tweak this and uh, extend the area here. And uh, it really works well. So you can see the uh, chassis, you're looking at it straight down. And uh, for those that watched the uh, first video, you remember I've got my uh, kickstand, that's what I'll call it here. And I've got everything propped up. It puts the uh, radio right here in a perfect position. Uh, my head's about 6-8 inches away from the uh, chassis and I can get right in on it at this angle. So uh, I think it'll serve me well. A couple other things I did as well. I just put some uh, padding here with some uh, double-edged tape um, along the uh, sides so we don't uh, scuff up the uh, sides of the radio. And I left enough room here to be able to you know, get the tuning condenser back in as well. And of course, if I want to work on the uh, front side of the radio, you know, I can just uh, flip it over as such. So it's another look at it here. So I still got access to everything on the top side. And then I can just uh, pick it up and rotate it. Now my other stand, you know, it actually rotates or pivots, which is nice. Uh, this is so small and lightweight. Uh, this is, uh, I think, ideal. Let me zoom in here real quick, and I'll give you guys an idea of what the uh, work will look like when I start uh, doing the recapping and replacing these uh, resistors that are out of tolerance. Alright, hope that's showing up well for you guys, but uh, this is the uh, view that I'll have. And uh, you can see um, how accessible everything is. And you will notice I put the uh, potentiometers here, well that being the band switch here and the uh, volume on off here facing away from me instead of down because there's a lot of components uh, back in here around this uh, tube socket and everything is kind of cluttered up so instead of working in this direction you know I'll be working you know in this direction which uh, I think makes sense all this is nice and open here one of the probably most open uh, chassis I've ever worked on I can only remember maybe one other and I don't even remember the uh, maker model Anyway, I thought I would uh, share that with you guys. Let me uh, get the tuning condenser over here real quick. I still had some of the uh, Piclex 20 on a uh, sponge, and I uh, just left it on here overnight. And um, you guys that saw the uh, other video or my last video, you saw how cruddy this was. So, you know, just in uh, one night with a uh, damp sponge with just a little bit of product on it, it... Uh, really did a great job taking the uh, rust off. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and take this thing apart. And I'm not sure what's falling out of this thing, but uh, something just dropped. We'll figure that out. Or maybe it was just the uh, grid cap here I reckon hit. All right, taking a closer look at this, looks like I've got one and a half turns here. And about three turns down here on this side. And I just wanted to uh, note that. Just a couple fasteners here to break loose. Well, something great. It's not seized up now, so I think it had something to do with the uh, tension being placed here on the uh, dial cord itself or uh, something. We'll uh, look at that closer because there's really not much to it, but uh, unless me uh, just taking this thing out, there was something caught down there and it's, uh, it fell out. But um, it's a little hard to turn. Needs to be uh, lubed up once we're done with the uh, cleaning. But uh, overall, not too bad. Seen worse. Yeah, I keep saying I'm headed to the uh, water hose, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and remove the uh, mica in here. I can't tell if it's frayed or not or what kind of condition it's in, but I'll go ahead and remove the uh, screws here for the what oscillator adjustment 
And um, notice the uh, gimmick capacitor right here for those that are new into the uh, radio restoration. So we're coming off of the uh, oscillator section back over to the antenna section itself. And you can see there's a little bit of capacitance added here just by twisting the wires together. So um, we just need to make certain when we uh, finish the restoration whatever lead I go back with, if I use the original and or replace it, that uh, we take this into consideration. There's the uh, one mica sheet there from the oscillator section. It's uh, not broke, best I can tell. And the other two pieces of mica. I tell you, it looks better already. Just some uh, fresh, cold water. And uh, you can see it's uh, really tuning a lot better now. So getting some of that uh, gunk out of the uh, ball bearings here and away from the uh, tuning condenser. And you can see this one plate here has been out. That may be for a reason just for tuning. And it looks like it's not hitting anything, so I'm going to just leave it there at this point in time just so I don't create an alignment issue. Alright, I think that's good, and uh, we'll just let that work. Temperatures are going to be uh, fairly warm for another day or so before we're back down in the uh, winter weather, so uh, hopefully the uh, de-rusting will have an opportunity to uh, work out here in the shop. And uh, one more batch here. All right, let me uh, set that aside here, and uh, we'll let it work its magic.